John Rappaport, you're a smart guy when it comes to psyops. No more fake news dot com. What do you think is really going on? Yeah, I think they've gone crazy, Alex. <clears throat> I think uh, we're looking at, you know, end stage insanity here. The government commands you obey uh, the rights that you have come from the government. I mean, that on the face of it is complete lunacy. And it's a kind of, uh, you know, we're entitled to tell you where your rights come from, what you can do, what you can't do. There's nothing you can do about that because we're immune. We're buffered off from any criticism. We've got the media under control. And then when they, this insane, you know, these sex programs, education programs in school, the one you just mentioned, the anal sex, you know, deal, they always deny this. I mean, I've seen this happen time, time again. We didn't put this up. This isn't really part of the system that we teach. And then they'll say, well, it's an optional program and it's actually funded by somebody else. They just keep tap dancing and lying. But the truth is, they're doing it. They're doing it all the time. And this is just, you know, these are mind control factories, these schools. And so the elites who have been running these programs forever, these programs in public schools are just now automatic. They just churn themselves out without any, nobody has to make a phone call from high up to get them to do what they're going to do. They're just following their instructions from years and years ago and they keep expanding this insanity and nobody calls them on that's the problem i mean these parents at the chicago schools should rise up en masse march on the school demand to talk to the principal the the head of the board of education we want you to say why you put this in who told you to put it that's in? right let me throw this in because this is a great example uh, Gruber comes out now in five tapes and says he met with the president, developed the lies to rip everybody off. They use non-transparency and the public stupidness to get it done, and it's making everybody upset. This is the attitude. But in these videos, in three of the five, he's teaching PhDs how things really work. That's why they have Delphi Technique. They send them to these training seminars to say there is no vaccine exemption form when they know it's there. To say we didn't shoot your kid up without your permission. To say we didn't teach your five-year-old how to have anal sex. They are just lying, as you said. And then the parents go to the next school and it's hanging on the wall. So again, that's what's so diabolical is that they're teaching right down to the grassroots how to deceive everybody else it's, it's it is a massive criminal conspiracy no question about it and the only i mean the only vulnerability that exists at the level of children is when the parents stand up and refuse okay here we are 600 parents knocking on your door mr principal now you have a choice We'll either take our kids out of school altogether, or you explain exactly why you're doing this and who told you to do it, and let's have the details right now. That's right. That's why they're training the kids with food worse than Supermax prison food full of GMO with the president's wife directing it just to break their will and train them to be prisoners. This is the takedown of America by a culture of criminal scum. It's just, you can't do it politically. You just literally cannot do it. Okay, transparent financing, and let's have transparent financing, also transparent spending. I mean, the, this bill was written in a tortured way to make sure CBO did not score the mandate as taxes. If CBO scored the mandate as taxes, the bill dies. Okay, so it was written to do that. In terms of, in terms of risk-rated subsidies, if you had a law which said healthy people are going to pay in, it made explicit that healthy people pay in and sick people get money, it would not have passed. Okay, just like the people, transparent, lack of transparency is a huge political advantage. And basically, you know, call it the stupidity of the American voter or whatever. All right. But basically, that was really... We're going to get into sterilization here in a minute, but, but this is important because it's the playing dumb. And what John Rappaport and I just got into, if you just tuned in, I'm your host, Alex Jones. You're listening to InfoWars. Everywhere, they teach cops how to lie. They teach school teachers how to lie. They teach the school administrators how to lie. They teach the county how to lie. They teach the city how to lie. The state attorneys, I had this, one of the main state attorneys on from Maryland. When they were saying, it's the law, all the kids have to have the shots. 
it was on CNN like six, seven years ago. They were going in crying to get shots at the courthouse. And I said, but there's a waiver because it's not a law. It's a school policy. You're supposed to give them the waiver. He goes, you ought to be a lawyer. You're right. The judge has those at his desk, but you've got to request one. And no one tells him. And I said, do you take vaccines? And he goes, no, neither did my kids. I started laughing. Like we were winners. He was laughing with me on and off air because we were laughing at all the people with SWAT teams and police dogs barking as they went into the courthouse as this image of you've got to take vaccines so so ignorant people watching TV would see that and believe they had to take shots. And it was mainly black people going in to be shot up in Maryland. They're in uh, Baltimore. And so what I'm getting at here is it's a culture of fraud and, and tyranny really is when organized crime and fraud takes over your government. And I'll say it again, I'm not bashing police because I found they're more awake on average than the general public. The military is very awake. So, so it's a natural ally at one level, but also a, a very dangerous situation. But John, what I'm trying to get at here is, it's amazing, just like the sterilization, it's in all the UN documents, the funding, they've been caught for 50 years over and over again doing it, giving people polio, spreading it. Shooting people up with SV40, sterilizing women with the tetanus shots. They just got caught again. You just wrote about it. But the few minutes we've got in this short segment, speak to what I'm getting at. How do we articulate this to people? Because they call in and go, my school you know, in Austin says it's the law. My kid will be kicked out and I'll be arrested. And I go, they're going to use policy to kick them out and then claim truancy. But the law doesn't say they can kick you out for no vaccine. They're, they're fraudulently going to have the police come in and arrest you for the truancy. But they're not supposed to, so it's fraud, but the cop doesn't even know that themselves, and neither will even the grand jury if it was to go to them if you don't plea bargain. I mean, I used to actually go to these courts and warn people in the outside. I did this just a few times, and they would get so upset. So what I'm saying is it's, a, it's an organized crime deal, but only the judge and only the school administrators know of the fraud. Isn't that incredible? Oh, yeah. It's that incredible and more. I mean, remember what Pelosi said about Obamacare. You know, you have to, we have to pass the legislation in order for you to be able to know what it says, which indicated, of course, what everybody knew, which was none of the congressmen who voted for it even knew what was in it, the thousands of pages. So when I, when I heard this, you know, and I recovered from it, this was some time ago, I thought back to when I grew up. I mean, if the New York Times had printed on the front page, Congress passes law affecting all Americans without reading it, you know, that would have been a gigantic scandal. I mean, that would have never stopped. But drip by drip, drop by drop, the lying, the fraud becomes so embedded in public life, private life, everywhere, corporate life, that people don't even blink now when this guy Gruber says, well, of course we're not transparent. I mean, what idiot would be transparent? That's not the way to get a law passed. We live in a PR society. Everything is about public relations. And the public, unfortunately, has gotten used to that and accepts it to a tremendous degree. That people will say and do anything in order to achieve their objectives. And they say, well, of course, I mean, that's the way the world works. So who would think it'd be any different, you know? But it's, of course it's different. I mean, as you say, this is organized crime all the way to the top. And people have to start rebelling against it. That is what wakes people up. As we wait too late, we'll be like Mexico or North Korea, never get out of it. Because exactly. it'll just become so systematic. This is what destroys wealth, it's what destroys civilizations. And it's reached cuckoo level. You're going to have the floor, John Rappaport, when we come back, getting into the huge uh, stories that you've been uh, kind of collating, the admissions of the secret sterilization program worldwide. Stay with us. Mass in Ferguson, Missouri. A pregnant woman says she was raped in jail by a Ferguson police officer last October, according to a federal lawsuit filed Friday. The woman, J.W., in her initials in the suit, was stopped by the accused officer, Jarris Hayden, on October 13th because her license plate were expired. She should have just been illegal. He let her go. And Hayden arrested her after she gave a false name. You smell good, J.W. claims Officer Hayden said to her during her booking. This will teach you a lesson. 
JW's boyfriend eventually posted her bond, but Officer Hayden said she still had a traffic warrant for other cities. And then it goes on. In exchange for securing her release, Officer Hayden took JW to a boiler room and proceeded to have sex with her. And she did not resist out of fear, according to the lawsuit. The suit also claims that Officer Hayden led her to a side room and told her to stay close to the building when leaving to presumably stay out of the sight of security cameras. JW went to the hospital afterwards, and DNA tests confirmed pubic hair on her body from Hayden. Looks bad, according to the lawsuit. The lawyers will put stuff in lawsuits that aren't true, though. I'm not saying it isn't true. I'm just saying I don't believe anything I see these days. The conduct of the city of Ferguson law enforcement in engaging in repeated acts of violence and constitutional violations against the citizens constitutes a pattern, the lawsuit says. The lawsuit comes at a poor time for the city as protesters are expected to riot in response to the jury decision on whether to indict Officer Darren Wilson who shot and killed 18-year-old Michael Brown during altercation. Great job turning this out just as it breaks Kit Daniels. But we might just add the point here that thugs are, are planning to use protests as cover to riot and, and delegitimize because we just say protesters are expected to riot. I know that's what the media says, but... We don't have time to edit stuff here on air, and I'm trying to. they got a great team. Let's do all this out openly on the air. Ferguson cop rapes woman in jail, lawsuit claims. Lawsuit comes at worst possible time as protesters mass. I guess stage is the word in Ferguson. Good, good report there. We'll see what happens from it. You know, I wouldn't believe stuff like this if so many cops weren't pleading guilty to raping women. And the old thing is, you know, cops pull up by the topless bar on the dancers, leave it too. Pull them over and say, look, you know, give me oral sex and I won't take you in for DWI. I don't know if this guy's guilty or not. It's just a lawsuit. I also know criminals lie a lot. It's amazing how people in this world of fraud think making something up gives them power. And so when you've had people make stuff up about you, you name it. You just start to, like, want to see some proof. And I want to see it from cops when they say about, you know, something about me, and I want to see when people say something about them. So um, it's what Rappaport was just getting into, the corruption of society. This is what brought Mexico down. It's what's bringing Latin America and Asia down and the Middle East down. They're not economies based on honor, based on doing business with folks that you can do a handshake deal with. People think... I think half the public, if you're nice to them, don't be mean to them, treat them good with respect, that you're there to be fed on, you're there to be pushed around, you're there to be used, and you know that they get an advantage by screwing somebody. Well, you might the first couple times, but you end up dying alone. You end up being alone. And I just thank my lucky stars every day that I am part of a culture of honorable people and folks that don't backstab and play games. And, 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 and so many people are sociopathic now where they think that if they can screw you over, that's winning, even though a real sociopath would know being honorable long-term is actually the best way to be successful. I was always honorable because that's how I was raised and my genetics. That's why they always attack my honor in the media because they want to say I'm dishonorable because they know my greatest attribute is that I am honorable. So the young people out there, staying out of the system is winning. Becoming Independent, that means wealthy, even if it's middle class or just you know working class. If you own your own business, your own house, you don't have to answer to anybody, you're successful. It's the gang mentality. Rappaport, I'm ranting here. Give me your comment on what I just said about that, and then I want to get into the sterilization. I see it at all levels, Alex, just like we're discussing here. As you say, how can I take advantage of a situation in order to lie? cheat, steal, commit fraud. It's just one giant, I mean, talk about the melting pot. That's what this country keeps on becoming over and over in bigger and bigger terms at every level, is the fraud, getting over on people, the sociopathic behavior, etc., etc. You see it at every single possible level, from the biggest down to the the smallest and somewhere this is learned behavior 
I mean, because we don't have 100% sociopaths in this country. I mean, this is more, this is the culture. This is learned. This is understood. It's learned through television. It's learned through schools. It's learned through parents. It's learned through institutions of society and government, especially. Because if a person experiences the intrusion of government on their life, in a completely illegal, fraudulent way, and goes through that experience and understands even a little bit of how it feels, from that point on, that person is going to be changed. They're not going to be the same person. So we see it everywhere. And, you know, the only solution to it is, as you say, to work in an honorable way. Because when you do, people recognize that. They understand. This is different. This is what I want. This is what I thought America was. This is where I'll put my allegiance, not with these other maniacs. Will we ever hit a bottom? I mean, is there no level of Obama people making fun of us, laughing at us, calling us stupid? How far can they go? I don't think there is any bottom. I think, like everything else that counts, we're talking about grassroots revolution. A revolution in which people stand up in every possible way for principles, regardless of what other people say about them, regardless of what other people do. And there's something, uh, fortunately, that's very contagious about that when people see it happening. You've come across these stories. You know, somebody defends their home against an intruder successfully, legally with a gun. Somebody is growing their own food. Somebody is standing up for what's right. And all of a sudden, a huge number of people say, that's right. This is what we thought America was supposed to be. So the more of that we can see, the better the chance is that, you know, we win. But as far as how low those other guys will sink, uh, man, there's no bottom. There is no bottom. Until they go from smart criminal conspirators, but still evil, to delusional nutcases that think they can burn down half the city because they want to expand their palace, a.k.a. Uh, Nero. Exactly. When that happens, then they, you know, then they've committed suicide. And, you know, that's going to happen. It's already starting to happen. Why do elites, whether it's Hitler or Stalin, we know Stalin was poisoned, why do they always push till they fail? If Hitler would have stopped... It just Poland and Czechoslovakia and Austria, he was going to be left alone. Then he goes and gets France, attacks England, declares war on the U.S., and then turns against the Russians, you know, 170 million of them, that in a whole bunch of wars and never give up. I mean, I don't know what he was thinking when his big hero, uh, Napoleon, got defeated by him. Bismarck couldn't beat him. Uh, I mean, imagine somebody trying to invade America. You can only do it from within the way we're seeing and opening the borders up. You couldn't do it the other way. So I give the globalists that. Uh, I mean, why is it that evil elites always, who show that they're genius early on, go crazy and do things that destroy them? I think it's because you can't turn back when you've committed a certain amount of evil. Because in order to turn back, or stop what you're doing, you have to admit that there's another way, that there's another viewpoint, that there's, a, that there's a thing called right and a thing called wrong. That's what tortures these psychopaths. That if they were to stop, they would have to think and reflect and realize what they've done. So they just give in to this contagion of evil and they do insane things and then they destroy themselves. They can't stop, because to stop is eventually to admit and understand what you've done. That's why they just don't ever stop until somebody stops them. Well, that's right. And 21 million Germans died in World War II. Uh, that's more than a third of their population. There were about 75 million when the war started. They were less than 55 million when it was over. Conversely, 22 million Russians died in that war. Folks, you need to understand that when politicians go crazy, this is where it leads. And I'm seeing the exact type of crazy-eyed nuttiness out of our elites. And I've studied our previous elites, Eisenhower, people before him. They had their own issues, but 
they were not as delusional. They had been in frontline combat in World War One. They had been in real world events. They'd been on the boxing club. They'd been sharecroppers. They'd been now the elites are so insulated and so weak. When I look at Gruber and people, that it really gives me a sick feeling to realize that our leadership is a bunch of soft trash. Remember that famous statement of Madeleine Albright's between the two wars in Iraq when she was asked, well, you know, the uh, sanctions against Iraq have killed 500,000 children in Iraq. Do you think that's worth it? And she sat there on 60 Minutes and said, you know, yes, I do. I think it really was. It's a tough call, but yes, it's worth it. I mean, that's, you know, how much more sociopathic can you get? And how much more insulated can you get than to be sitting in some high perch somewhere making a decision that's going to kill half a million kids? Remember it's George Soros uh, did 60 Minutes and admitted he helped Hitler and helped round up thousands and said he felt no guilt for it. There you go. What about? I mean, why would he go on TV and say, I feel no guilt? I mean, I, I just, you know. Yeah, I mean, that's like asking, uh, you know, why is a lunatic a lunatic? Uh, he can't turn back. You know, I mean, how much more wealthy does he want to get? He's still manipulating markets. He's still going after more money and more money. Is why? He has, you know, he could live 50 lifetimes at least on the on where the wealth he's accumulated already. Because he can't stop. Because if he were to stop, and engage in real conversation with people and actually meet some genuine people outside his elite circles, he would begin to fathom how evil he is. He just has to keep on going. And That's right. They're a bunch of insulated super elites who hate the middle class and new wealth, who are believing their own BS. And I'm just here to tell you guys, you're going down. Everybody knows who's done it. I don't care you got half the public not knowing their name or finding their butt with both hands. A large minority worldwide knows who you are. You're going to be brought to justice. We're coming for you. So I would suggest for your kids and grandkids' future, you back off now instead of threatening to destroy the whole planet in the process. Now, let's shift gears. They look at the giant third world with disdain and want to reduce their population because they see them as a plague living on their property. John, certainly if you've been to Calcutta or Mexico City, there are too many people in certain areas. But we've done the population actuary. If you don't have two kids for every two adults, things collapse. Population will plane off at about $9 billion, all the actuaries show. There are some problems with dirty technology, but we're cleaning it up. But regardless of that debate, you can correct me if you don't agree with that, we can't have the UN running around putting sterilants in the tetanus shot and, and live polio clearly in a population reduction program. But even if the yuppies are for that in some deep-seated you know, greed that, well, there's less people, I get more. They're doing it also to us here as well uh, with weaker compounds so it's not as noticeable in the soft kill. Get into your report on this that's at nomorefakenews.com and infowars.com that we put up last week. Uh, breaking all of this down. Depopulation vaccine in Kenya and beyond. We've now got major scientists and Catholic bishops going public. Yeah, they're going public. And basically what it is, is one of the more primitive uh, research tools of the depopulation gang, which means Rockefeller Fund, World Health Organization, the United Nations, so beloved uh, on the left, <laughs> you know, uh, the Population Council, Rockefeller it, money is everywhere in this and has been for 50 years more. HCG, which is a hormone that assists in maintaining pregnancy, has been put into vaccines in Kenya. It was done in the Philippines and other places. The body, woman's body reacts by treating it as an invader, as a disease entity, and tries to destroy it so that when later on she gets pregnant, she's going to have a miscarriage because she treats that sustaining, life-giving hormone as if it were a virus or some other kind of germ. Uh, in my article, which people can read, I indicate the studies that have been done, where they were done, when they were done. The UN admits they did this. For those who don't know, 
it also then soft kills the women because now they have autoimmune responses every time hcg is released in lower amounts outside of pregnancy they create an autoimmune response to the hcg so it also ends up basically killing the women but it's long and grueling yeah that's the horrible part of it and that's just one way to depopulate people medically i mean there are chemicals there are, of course operations surgeries we've just been reading about one that went horribly wrong uh and there are there is you know research ongoing all the time on how to introduce anti-fertility and sterility compounds into vaccines standard vaccine programs i mean these are not esoteric sneaked in, in the middle of the night these are your regular you know cdc type vaccine programs this is a long-term depopulation agenda that's been going on forever and a reader wrote me who talked to some doctor who tried to poo poo the whole thing and this incredible idiot doctor was trying to say that how could this even happen because hcg is a natural hormone in the body how could i mean it doesn't even make sense they bind it to tetanus it's declassified the u.n admitted it in 96 they just got exactly. caught again you exactly. this doctor's ignorance doesn't trump that we're informed no of course not the doctors will always say that because they don't want to start looking at their own vaccine programs i mean all you have to do is say to a mother we're going to inoculate your kid with toxic chemicals and a lot of germs is that okay with you and if you put it that way she would say of course not that's right john report stay there powerful info john we're doing five minutes of overdrive because i cut you short getting into other topics in your article you link to mainstream news in europe where you got major catholic bishops and scientists i mean they're looking at it they're they're catching them uh just ignoring this isn't going to protect them when, you know, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation gives a million kids the polio vaccine and 64,000 get paralyzed, 3,000 die. I mean, they can't cover this up anymore. No. And this is one of the most vital movements, uh, really, on the planet is people understanding what vaccines are really doing. I mean, there are many, many people on the planet, groups, individuals, what have you, mothers of autistic children and so forth. They know the score there's no fooling them this is one of these issues where tremendous advance is being made regardless of what the doctors are saying regardless of the propaganda and the hype from the cdc so in this case you had you know some catholic a handful of catholic uh, prelates who got vials of this vaccine in kenya sent it to different independent labs and they all came back with a verdict okay there's hcg in here this is an anti-fertility vaccine and the government down there is trying to pretend nothing is happening nothing ever did happen let's bring it out into the open let's bring it all out into the open and see that this has been going on for 50 years there's nothing new here what's new is possibly the numbers of women who have been vaccinated over a million maybe three million which makes it incredible ongoing crime. And that's just one vaccine. We have the uh, HPV vaccine for supposedly cervical cancer being given to women worldwide and being causing infertility, death, autoimmune disorders. And now Bill Gates wants to put it in the food where you can't escape it. We'll be right back in 70 seconds in overdrive. Everybody else, goodbye. See you on the nightly news tonight, 7 o'clock central, Infowars.com. GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. InfoWarsLife.com. Check it out today. I have set out to bring you the most hardcore, cutting edge supplements and nutraceuticals, bar none. And that's what you'll find at InfoWarsLife.com. We have rejected literally hundreds of products from the InfoWars Life line because they are not of the very highest quality, or because they're not 100% organic, or because they don't pass all of the strictest toxicology tests there are that we have listed at InfoWarsLife.com. Whether it's survival, 
Travel Shield Nascent Iodine or DNA Force, Super Male Vitality, Super Female Vitality, Lung Cleanse, Fluoride Shield, Oxy Powder. I believe that all of these products will blow you away like they've done the thousands of other customers that have visited InfoWarsLife.com and believed in us and tried the products. Folks, check out InfoWarsLife.com today and the entire line of groundbreaking, cutting-edge, hardcore products. You're listening to The Alex Jones Show. Fix bayonets. We are now entering overdrive with your host, Alex Jones, broadcasting live from the front lines. If you are receiving this transmission, you are the resistance. In fact, they came in and gave it to me earlier. Here it is. AP Impact. Vaccine court keeps claimants waiting. Back in the 70s, they created the secret vaccine court, expanded it in the 80s. And they cover up all people that get killed or die for the vaccine. When they, you know, you drop dead right there, they have to pay it out. An AP read hundreds of decisions, conducted more than 200 interviews, and analyzed a database of more than 14,500 cases filed in a special vaccine court. That database was current as of 2013. The government has refused to release an updated version since, and they will not pay when people win. So see, government just, and I think there's $4 billion in the fund of taxpayer money. They won't. Even why not? It's just criminal. It's ruled by the gun. John Rappaport, you've got uh, the floor of the last four minutes. Where do you see all this going? Okay, so first of all, with this vaccine court, the government compensation system, people have to realize you can't sue the vaccine maker. This was a deal that was cooked up in the 1980s between the manufacturers of vaccines and the government, U.S. government. The makers came in and they said, look, we're getting out of the business because there are too many lawsuits. We're losing too much money. So if you want us to stay in the business, you, the federal government, are going to have to create a system whereby you do it your way, you compensate people who are destroyed, killed, kids, brain damaged, whatever. You handle it. Nobody sues us. And the government said, fine, we'll do it. So they set up this labyrinthine system where you have to crawl through it and defend yourself and prove this and that. And it's all semantic word games. It's like going into Orwell's 1984 to get compensation for the government because your child got vaccinated with the MMR vaccine and left the world like that. And you have to prove that somehow an official disease or disorder was contracted through the vaccine. When the mother was there, she knew what happened. That's what she's saying. So this is insane punishment on top of punishment. And where all this is going, Alex, is into a popular revolution against the fraud of vaccines. Not just the fraud, the danger, the destruction. Between 100,000 and 1.2 million adverse reactions, serious adverse, adverse reactions to vaccines every year in the U.S. That's what we're dealing with at minimum. All that's being covered up by the government who says, well, all these vaccines are incredibly safe. You rarely see an adverse effect. That's total baloney. They're lying through their teeth. They're covering up crimes for the vaccine makers who are behind the scenes laughing up their sleeves. And the bigger the house of cards, the harder it'll fall. I see the house of cards on so many fronts falling. Absolutely. And this is one of the major ones. No question about it. The rebellion is in full force on this. You can count on it. And, and they've doubled down, good. though, with the flu. They're like nurses stomping down the street. And in businesses, they'll go, get your flu shot to random people, not just me. So now the cult is getting more aggressive. They're shooting kids up at school without consent. I mean, they're doubling down. No question. And nurses are being fired from their jobs if they won't take the flu shot. I get emails all the time. Yeah, that's this. in the news. That's in the news. So, so, so there's a full-on war going on right now. No question about it. And that's a good thing. 
Let's win it. That's what I say. Well, yeah, because if they get found out on this, it's over for them. It's, it's a domino. The globalists have so many dominoes about to fall. Obamacare has already fallen. I don't think they can. Man, I tell you, this is an incredible time. It is. Yeah, and you're right. These dominoes are all interconnected. If that vaccine domino falls, and it's going to fall, there's going to be a loud crash of a lot of other dominoes. Count on it. All right, John Rappaport, thank you so much. No more fake news.com. Always compelling, hard hitting, well documented journalism. Thank you so much for all the time. Thank you, Alex. Always appreciate it. What a great guy. And you're a great audience and great crew, and the Lord's certainly the best. And we just appreciate you all.